What's cooking guys, it's the Saluki. Guess where I am? Well, actually you don't need to guess because you've probably already read the title. I'm finally in Israel, making videos in Israel. And I'm super stoked to be here and make videos here. We'll get into that in a minute. Right now I want to tell you about the place where I'm at. This is a Christian Palestinian village here in Northern Israel, as you can see. This is actually a unique one because it's a merged municipality with a non-Palestinian city called Ma'alot. So together it's Ma'alot Arshicha and therefore you have lots of mixed Arabic and Hebrew on the signs all over and on the shops. So let's walk around the village and leave the city center and see what this place is about because there's not a lot of men, there's not a lot of Christian Palestinian villages here in Israel. So I'm getting my vaccine tomorrow and then I've got 28 days. It's the Moderna vaccine. I've got 28 days until I get my second dose. And all that time I'm gonna be hanging out here in Israel because if I leave, then I can't, if I come back, then I'll have to quarantine again, which I did when coming here initially. So there's not a chance I'm doing that, but I think I'm gonna make some of my finest content here because I can speak the local language, obviously. I speak Hebrew and uh, English and Russian is also spoken here a lot. You'll see that in the future. So my ability to speak Hebrew is going to allow me to get the best local interactions. Check out the street name, Abu El Ala El Mari. So this village is mixed Muslim and Palestinian. And I saw a mosque over here. So let's go and check it out and then go and check out the church when I'll find it. to the mosque maybe because it's afternoon but there were stairs leading up to this point which is the top of the mosque and there's a beautiful view from here I see another mosque over there in the distance with a gold cap so let's go and check that one out and see if it's open and yeah, this place is really beautiful. It's 600 meters above sea level. So it's also nice and a bit windier than the normal sweltering heat of Israel. That was supposed to be my first time entering a mosque in Israel or Palestine, but the mosque was closed. There's supposed to be another one. As we saw, I'm trying to find it right now. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> So let's see if this one is open. I just found this on the way to the mosque and it looks like an improvised petrol station. They have here Dor Alon, which is a big petrol brand in Israel, but it doesn't look like there's anybody tending to it, anybody that's asking for money for the petrol. Maybe, it's, I don't know, <laughs> I can't really explain it. Etiquette of entering the mosque for non-Muslims. Women, women, women. Do not talk, keep the mosque clean. Do not touch the Holy Quran. It also says it's in Hebrew and in Arabic. Well, they didn't say anything about filming, so I hope that's okay. Standard mosque in Israel, apparently. As I said, this is my first time entering a mosque in Israel. Here you have some books. Probably one of them is the Holy Quran, which I'm not supposed to touch according to the sign outside. Here we have Majul dates. Majul, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, yeah, very Muslim thing to be handing out dates. 
I would take one, but I'm all alone here. I don't want to like steal their dates, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and here we have uh, the prayer beads. These are used to um, when you pray and you want to count how many times you've said a certain thing, like Bismillah, for instance, in the name of Allah, like in the name of God. And every time you count one, Bismillah, 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 Bismillah. All right, let's get out of here and go to the church. See if we can find the church. What do you think about my fake converse, by the way? They cost me $20 when I was in Athens. Pretty good replica. The church is there? Thanks. Hello. Let's hope I'm not met with a locked gate. Yeah, the moment I saw this, I knew it was going to be locked, but we can admire it from afar. I mean, I bet it's not that different from Europe inside. By the way, these places aren't closed because of COVID. Nothing is closed because of COVID in Israel these days. Only now, since I came here, they're talking about another lockdown because wherever I go, <laughs> wherever I go, COVID follows me. They want me to, oh, there's another gate here. Let's see if it's open. Uh, nope. But anyway, everywhere I go, I don't know. Like I came to Vietnam, there wasn't a lockdown for an entire year and I go there and then shit hits the fan again. And same here in Israel, I'm fucking tired of it. Well, this is a pretty cool little back street that I found while walking to the church. I thought I'd show you that. There's actually plenty of pubs and restaurants. Well, pubs, but they do sell alcohol here since it is a Christian village. And the Muslim ones, you won't find so many bars, at least not this open here. It another bar exclusive bar which is pretty exclusive apparently not every bloke can get in let's see if i can get in see i told you guys it's exclusive okay so there's another Christian Palestinian village which is just five minutes away from here and it's supposed to be a lot more exclusive more exclusively Christian I even heard that uh, they don't let Muslims buy houses and rent houses over here it's called Me'ilia so let's head over there and see what it's like I've made it to Me'ilia well made it it's just a five minute drive but I already like this place it was really easy to find parking and here it seems a lot more Christian because you have lots of pork being sold here. People are looking at me as if I fell out of the sky. But here, for example, you have a pork shop. And I saw a couple of more just driving in here. Here's another one that says all types of meat in Hebrew. And then it actually says in Russian, Center for Sveza which means center for fresh meat sale of fresh meat i believe the reason that it says it in russian is because most mostly the people in this country that eat pork are russians yeah here it says white meat so that's confirmed that they sell pork but mostly russians and obviously christian and palestinians but the muslims don't and the jews don't even if they aren't that religious just <laughs> Even if they aren't that religious or just a little bit religious, then they just, they really stray away from pork. The uh, Jews and the Muslims as well. As if it's like a big, big no-no. Over there, there's one more shop that says white meat. Also, Israel is a bit of a theocracy, which means it's a government that goes slightly by religion. For example, on Saturdays, all the shops are supposed to be closed because that's the holy day for Jews and uh, the buses don't run. But the way they work around this rule for all the people that do want to eat pork, for example, Russian Israelis, like you saw over there was written in Russian, is they just grow the pork in Christian settlements like this one in Christian villages. And they probably have a pork factory around here somewhere. 
and that way they are really working around the rule because you're not allowed to grow pork mainly in uh, Jewish villages and Muslims are not going to do it of course because it's haram forbidden in Islam and here we have a statue of I believe Mother Mary so this place really is a lot more Christian than the previous village. I realized that I just took a piss next to an olive tree, which is pretty cool since this is my first video in Israel in, well, since 11 years ago. <laughs> but this is my first video in Israel and that's what this part of the world is known for. At least Palestine is known for its luscious olive trees. I love Meilia. And there's a picture of Jesus Christ, a uh, statue of Jesus Christ. So this is as Christian as it gets. I reckon that's about it for today. Thank you for watching. There's going to be a lot of great stuff coming from Israel. If you'd like to support me now more than ever, I really need it because <laughs> Israel is really fucking expensive. You're going to see that in my videos as I start to buy shit. This video, I didn't buy anything. So if you'd like to support the channel, help me travel to more remote locations, get better equipment and stuff. There's going to be a link in my description to my Patreon where you can make small donations to help keep this going. So thanks for watching and peace in the Middle East. And I love you.